I wanna go live. Here we go. Hey, everybody, welcome to 420 Live. Jeff Kravitz, your host. Ah, uh, if you've been uh, sitting by your computer, you're probably got you're probably got square eyes. You've been staring at screen so long in the past 24 hours, trying to make heads or tails of what's happening in our world. I went live earlier today for my first 420 Live East Coast edition that I've done in the past 167 or eight shows that I've done since this pandemic started in on March 16th when I started doing. 420 lives and uh i wore a tie two shows in a row which was yesterday's show when i was doing my election reporting and then today the special report where we're talking about what's happening in our country and what we're watching right now we're one nevada away from a complete victory for the blue team so uh we're waiting for that to happen i have it i can see it over there and i'm sure one of you guys that are watching will chirp in if there's been any movement and nevada is called so I can react jub jubilantly <laughs> when I hear the news. Because let's face it, we went to bed last night. We were all like, yeah. And uh, I said a little prayer. I don't really pray much. But this morning I said a little prayer and I picked up my phone. And I was like, oh, good. Yeah, I can see what's happening here. I can see what's, I can see the, I can see what's going on. So I think we're in good hands. I, I'm hoping because we're in each other's hands. We need to take care of each other. That hopefully this is a unifying night in American history, not a uh, not a you know more divisive. I don't think we need more divisiveness in this in this uh, time. I think it's time for everybody to unite, regardless of race, color, creed, religion. Kind of like the way our country was found two hundred years, two hundred plus years ago. I don't know what's taken so long for the words of equal. Every man is created equal to sink through, and how hard everybody has with that little simple thing. We're all created equal, not just men. Men and women are created equal. We're all equal, you know. But there's no difference, you know. We all bleed red. We all have brains. Some of us use uh, our brains more than others. I'm not pointing any fingers here. But, you know, it's uh, it's this has been a, a revelation of a time. And I can't say I, I just could not bear. I felt like I've been under a rock or under a heavy weight for four years with this clown in charge. And I'm sure I got another 10 weeks of him blowing smoke and uh, driving us all crazy out there. But, you know, politics was never the reason I started this show. Actually, I started the show as a colossal distraction from the things that drive us. But like everybody else, I felt that the, it was important that we all focus, that we we gathered the troops, that everybody kind of focused. Amazing to see the turnout in the red and the blue. I mean, the most people that have ever voted for a president in our history, the most people that have voted in an election in 120 years. That's crazy. Everybody's activated, the young, the old, the black, the white, the red, the purple, the green, the orange, all of us, the Oompa Loompas. We're all activated. We're all ready to go. We're all ready to, to kick it up. And and I think we're ready to, to bring the country together. I, I, for one, I'm ready to unify. I mean, I'm not ready for more divisiveness. So, you know, all our friends there in Trumpville, you know, I, I've been waiting four years to uh, add all the people back that I've been blocking on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to adding them back so we can have a dialogue. And, you know, if you are still got your head up your ass, then I'm going to have to block you again. But hopefully we could all see past this divisiveness and not be about politics. I don't really want to talk about politics. Politics is fucking boring. I, I think it's it's like, yeah, last night was exciting, but it was exciting because we knew how painful another four years could be. So we're all on the edge of our seat. We're watching it like we were watching the Lakers. And uh, now it's, it's time to get into the, to the distraction, to get into taking our minds away from all these things and letting this COVID thing and our whole world get back into the healing and uh, to put us on a new path. Countries have done it already. New Zealand, Australia. These companies are back open for business. They're having concerts. They're having... People are going and enjoying themselves. They're seeing sports. They're out. I mean, how can you take the music and fun away from our lives? And on that note, our guest today, Wendy Starlin, she is thick in the music industry. She's been at it for many years as a recording artist, as a talent scout, and as a woman about town that's uh, made a, a very nice uh, life for herself. And I'm looking forward to talking to her. So let's bring Wendy in and say, hi, Wendy Starlin. How are you? Hello, thanks so much for having me on. 
420 Live, uh, loving it. Thanks. How so was much. how was your how was your night last night? I know you're not very political, but I'm sure you were paying attention, right? Of course I was. I mean, it was a nail biter, <laughs> and it still is. Um, but hopefully, you know, everything will turn out the way it's meant to. And I couldn't agree more with all of the sentiments that you just expressed. <laughs> but, uh, it's pretty intense, you know, just watching the country just be, you know, so divided and and everybody so passionate about it as they should be because it's it's frightening to to think about what's been happening and especially it's all heightened and emphasized by the pandemic and you know everybody's got cabin fever and worried and for their job for their financial future for you know their rights just it's it's a it's an intense time no, I, I've seen a huge fall off in my business as, as an entertainment photographer because of the lack of events and stuff like that. But you work in the studio and you're working behind the scenes a lot. Are you seeing a, a change in your part of the industry also? Oh, my God. It's it's done right now. I mean, uh, people don't want I mean, everything if you're on a microphone and there's touching all the buttons in the studio. I mean, uh, people don't want to spread COVID. Understandably so. I mean, I had 10 deaths during COVID. It's been like a really wow. intense um, time. So I, I can assure you that people are not uh, people are being very cautious as they should. And um, yeah, the music industry right now, I think, is having a real revolution. And where I think it's going, I think it's going into VR, into virtual reality. I think that's what's what's next. And um, finally, the introduction of 5G to everybody's cell phone is, is going to allow for that to become, you know, pervasive. Well, 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 elaborate on how you think, because I'm into the virtual reality field. I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm working with the people that did the Burning Man virtual uh, burn this year that created the whole uh, virtual playa. So I'm interested in how you think virtual reality is going to apply to the music business. Yeah, I think that there are going to be virtual concerts. I think they're going to uh, and people can experience this in brand new ways where it's not just going to see a concert. It's like living in a video game, basically. There's, there's, you know, your character can, there are no age restrictions. There are no venue size restrictions. The artist has access to be able to launch into VR from their home. So if they want to perform a concert from their living room, but it looks like it's in Madison Square Garden or a, more of a fantasy type of environment. Uh, you know, I'm working with uh, an amazing company called Red Pill VR and um, and uh, a friend of mine, Georgia Sinclair, and we are uh, working on a character that um, we hope to, to launch and, and music is, is the universal language. So that is the best possible way to invite VR into people's lives because, you know, everyone loves concerts, as you know, you know. Right. And, and, and you're, you're 100 percent right of what's happening in the VR world. And it's happening already through Altspace VR and through the Facebook venues are two amazing programs where you can go in and, there and share. The Burning Man is on the Altspace VR platform and uh, they did a concert with Diplo. And they shot Diplo with uh, cameras all around him in, on a green screen. And they dropped him into the virtual playa. So he was performing on stage as himself. And then there were all the little avatars running around watching his, his concert. And he had the VR on so he could see the fans. And then they could see him too. I mean, it's, it's so cool. Plus, there's, you know, all of the, I mean, going to a concert obviously is, is great, but during this time, while we can't go to concerts, especially, um, it's nice to have an option that's also less expensive. You don't have to travel somewhere. You don't have to pay for these, you know, expensive tickets. Like, you can do these micro payments. It's better for for brands because you can be transported into a new environment um, where you're like, the brand is all encompassing. If you're a sneakerhead and you know, you can touch something in VR and then be transported into a room with 20,000 sneakers and it could, you know, you click on it, it could show up at your door the next day. I mean, it's fascinating. And VR up until this point didn't have the uh, technology, you know, to support it. It was too expensive to get a computer that was, 
you know, it costs minimum of like probably around $2,500 to be able to activate it. But now with the introduction of 5G to cell phones, all the prices are going to come down. And what, what also the Oculus, Oculus um, has the new headset out and that, that came down in price to $299, which is, it, which is so cheaper. Yeah, and, and no wires, so you're wireless and you have the head thing go. Do you have your own headset? Have you gotten your headset yet? I, I have not yet, but this uh, this two ninety nine one sounds really. Good. Oh yeah, you got to get you you have to get the Oculus. You got to get <laughs> yeah. the Oculus, and I, I, I well, we can meet in the virtual world, that's and I can take I can take you on a tour, and, and that's a really unique thing I think about this technology is that you can go with your friends. Not only can you yeah. go to concerts, but you can decide to go with your friends and all be together in a room, and you can talk to each other, and you can play with different. Uh, virtual toys and you can watch the music so it's like watching a concert but it also has that social effect which we're now we're all watching concerts on screens but we're not having this the social interactions usually in the chat i don't know how many live shows you watch what was your last concert you went to before pandemic started that is a great question been a minute i gotta think about it like i it's been a minute since i've been to a concert like I, i'm really trying to think about the last concert have, have you been to any of the drive-ins or any of these I, know, these virtual I, things? I feel like it was maybe greta van fleet i think i went to a festival um and i'm not sure exactly i had i have a few different uh concerts that i've been to but it, it's it's been so long that i can barely remember <laughs> and that, that, that's kind of crazy can you remember in your life when you had a period of time without a, sh a show like that? No, I definitely can't. This is a first. But music has been a, a, th a part of you for a long time. Since I was a little baby. I mean, I learned how to sing as soon as I could speak. You wow. know, I had a um, babysitter growing up who was a big gospel singer from down south named Rosetta Atkins. And she is like my second mother and still is. And every time I'm in New York City, I see her. And um, yeah, I mean, she took me home from the hospital and helped to raise me. And uh, I've been singing as long as I've been speaking. So it's it's been a huge part. And then my uncle um, played with lots of legendary folks, uh, Bruce Springsteen and the Allman Brothers and Black Sabbath and, um, you know, opened up for these people. And then my father played classical piano so with all these influences you know it all it all stuck at a very early age and i started com composing songs like seven maybe what was what was your first instrument piano piano i mean not that i'm so great at it i, I don't consider myself an expert I, I think my voice is my main uh instrument but you know through understanding music well now i've been able to um you know, take other musicians and, and be able to produce and be able to express, okay, this is the line I'm hearing for the bass. This is the drums. This is, I can, I can compose each part and put it together and in, in a way that makes sense. So your, your music sensibility would be your strong suit. I mean, my, I think my strongest suit in music is songwriting. I mean, I've been doing it forever and, um, you know, I've gotten the most, um, I've gotten the farthest, I'd say, with, with songwriting. That's worked out pretty well. Luckily. Yeah, and, and yeah, <laughs> you, so you, you have a publishing deal, I assume, and all the things that you need I, to have. Yeah, I, I, um, I, I my, my greatest uh, claim to fame, I guess, with songwriting is I was honored by the Songwriters Hall of Fame. So that worked out. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, well, it's, it's it's nice to get the verification, right? That you're that you've done something that people appreciate, especially Listen, something so competitive. Well, for sure, and you know, most people when they get that are like, you know, old and toothless. So, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and you know, I'm still uh, young enough to appreciate it. No, but in general, I I just um. I love songwriting. I love the process of, and I think it's the most important part of the process. I think you can give a great singer a mediocre song and it won't go anywhere. Or you could give like a mediocre singer 
a fantastic song and it'll go straight to number one. And we've had so many uh, mid-level singers take great songs to number one, like proving this model, so. <laughs> Well, a lot of it these days isn't really about the talent. Like back back when I grew up, I'm sure but kind of when you grew up too, um, people were famous for being on the radio. And then all of a sudden they had to switch to TV with MTV in the 80s. And then it was like all of a sudden you were famous because you looked really good on camera and it didn't really matter. You know, they made bands up just uh, like, uh, who were the two brothers? Millie Vanilli. <laughs> right? who didn't really have any talent. They were just guys that looked good on stage dancing around and then they got busted for lip syncing. Pretty funny <laughs> that one guy killed himself for lip syncing and yet people lip sync now all the time and, and are unapologetic about it. Oof, it's brutal. It brutal. brutal. But you know, there's still a lot of great talent. There's so much great talent out there. And um, I think there's now because you don't have to spend so much money to go into like this huge studio, you can really get professional great results at home. And, you know, people use pro tools and have these great home studio setups. You are competing with way more people than, you know, back in the day because no one could afford to even get into a studio. And now people can build their studios bit by bit and, and really, do a great job. So now it's more about the curation of that and the promotion of that. So I feel like the record label's job is more important than ever because um, they have to be- do you, do you still think the record label's relevant? Well, here's the thing, yes and no. So I, I think that the record label still is the difference between fame and no fame. Okay, um, so if you want to popularize music, you definitely need a record, record label at this point. Do I think the introduction of VR, depending on the price point, will keep that? Um, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be a huge opportunity. It's kind of like horse before the cart now, because now what happens is you'll go in your home studio, put something on YouTube, then everybody sees it, the record label sees it like, oh, we want to sign you. Where in the old days, you would do that whole process first and then the record label would promote you and make a video. I mean, listen, I don't know if that's really accurate, to be you honest. You don't think so? Well, I mean, Justin, yeah. Justin Bieber, uh, Justin you know, Bieber. It's someone, okay, Justin Bieber, to my understanding, and I could be wrong, so please correct me oh, if I'm wrong. Right. Go ahead, go ahead. I was under the impression that Justin Bieber was singing covers on YouTube, is that correct? Yes. And his manager found him okay so not the label his manager so right well, well, well i mean being discovered it's a huge difference because a man you know first of all like finding a great manager extremely difficult and getting a record deal also extremely difficult i mean i've been very blessed to have had several major label record deals <laughs> and what a um, unbelievable experience that has been. But um, just putting your song out there and thinking that a label is going to sign you is not going to happen. I can just tell you that right now. Like you might find, you know, a certain fan base. You may find a manager who's like, oh, you know, I'm, or a producer, but a label who's like, okay, I'm just going to stick. X hundreds of thousands of dollars behind you, that, that is pretty atypical. I so would say. What, what's happening with this whole TikTok generation now? Because they're putting songs on TikTok and then the songs are entering the charts and seven out of the 10 top uh, songs on the charts, on the pop charts, are artists that are called TikTok artists. There's not even a record label. The record label is TikTok. So now we have this whole new way of communicating and a whole form of people creating um, art. Yeah dance right well it's but there's it's also music because music they create the music to do the dance too and then yeah. they might have a song that's 30 seconds long that they have to turn into a three minute song but these these most of our top, our hits now are coming from tiktok which i find mind-boggling that i i find it mind-boggling too <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to. I'm equally as shocked as you are <laughs> yeah, well, i mean because you the way, the way you the way you specific it's a very specific lane, right? Wouldn't you say? Like TikTok is definitely not 
um, every genre. That's a very specific genre. Right. It's the poppy dance right. songs and, and I catch the, they, they're just catchy little hook. It's basically, they write a hook. You write a right. one minute hook. You're not even writing a chorus or a verse. You're like, oh, let's write a, a cute little uh, line and we'll do it over and over again. And we'll create this little dance to it. And the next thing you know, it's on the top of the charts. And uh, these kids don't even have any semblance of an idea that this is possible or it's going to happen to their song. And next thing you know, they're like, oh, you got the number one song in America. And they're like, what? But Doja Cat is an artist that was on. I don't know if you've heard of Doja Cat, but she's an artist that's performed a lot now. She's been on the, the award shows. She's, she was on the MTV Video Music Awards, and she did, um, I think, one of the other virtual shows recently. And so she created what was a whole creation off of TikTok. I just find it that our world is changing so fast that you and I who come from kind of the old way things were done is so hard to keep our heads wrapped around. And it's like, cause I'm not TikTok generation. Although my kids think I should be because they're like, well, I, don't, I mean, yeah, you still have yet to do, I mean, I haven't seen you do a dance on the show yet, but <laughs> no really your opportunity to do a little TikTok dance right now. Oh, crap, show me what you got. <laughs> <laughs> I can only dance from here <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, it's, a cra it's a crazy world. But you discovered one of the biggest talents in the world right now. Lady Gaga has set the world on fire over the past. It's been a decade since she's come on the scene, right? Uh, it ha it's been since 2007, I believe, or 2008, one of those. So it's been a long time. It's and what, when did you, when did your pass cross? Um, in 2006, 2006, or when our paths cross, I, um, I met her when she was at uh, famous music publishing. She was, she was working there and uh, I was going in to see Erwin Robinson, who's the CEO uh, about a publishing deal. And, she was she was there uh, working there, and she was very nice. And then it turned out that she was we, we were performing on the same bill uh, a month or two later, something like that. And uh, we spoke, and I saw her perform. And at the time, I was out um, looking for a very specific kind of singer for. Um, this record I'd been writing with my partner. Um, and I was like, listen, I think you'd be perfect for this. And uh, she, she just had this massive um, energy and star power. I mean, she, she was always singing to the back of the stadium, even when it was, you know, 200 people or whatever. Uh, she just had it from day one and she just needed the things around her to be elevated to her level. And so I was happy that I could be instrumental in, in doing that with her. And, and you, you made an introduction for her that changed her life. How were you helping? Oh, more right? than an introduction. It was like working on the project. Right. So that's why that was my next question. Did you work, you were working on the fame album also and, and were you writing or what was your role? I mean, she and I wrote songs together, uh, you know, production, like um, there's just every aspect of this project was, was incredibly, um, you know, it was very challenging. It was very, uh, I mean, it was a well, very. Was, was she a stubborn? Cause I know she's not, I'm not stubborn, but I would say as, um, sure of the direction she was heading in and going that way back then, or did she not, did she need a little help kind of molding it and massaging it into what Gaga became? Because in, in the days you met her, she was Stephanie. Yeah, it was Stephanie. Um, well, I just say that the show where I discovered her, it was radically, the, the genre of music was radically different than the fame record. So uh, it, it evolved quite rapidly. And she was, <laughs> well, I, I saw that tour. I saw the Fame Record tour. I shot it when it came through LA. And you know, her talent was undeniable. Her dancing skills. I mean, was she was she a dancer back then too, or was that something that? No, that was something that evolved as well. 
I mean, it, it's really, it was built, you know, that brand was built brick by brick and um, it became a global sensation and represented so many things that are in this election, you know, equal rights, uh, you know, we don't, the, whole transgen the whole transgender and, and, yeah. and freedom. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's been really crucial and um, actually one of the most amazing just to switch gears a little bit, the uh, during the pandemic, one of the best parts uh, was me, me meeting this woman, Shelly Tegelski, um, who was the creator of Pandemic of Love. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's basically a platform. Uh, she put up two sheets, one that said give help and one that said get help as soon as the pandemic started and people were losing their jobs and they were dying and they were quarantined. And so the platform matches patrons with people in need. Wow. And what, what's it called? I want to pull up the website here because I can share uh, it. Pandemicoflove.com. And um, it's truly miraculous. And Joe Biden actually called Shelly and told her what an amazing job she was doing, uh, doing this because now I believe uh, over 700,000 matches have been made since March 14th um, between patrons and uh, families in need. And I believe it's over $42 million in transactions. Yeah. This is since March and the average transaction is around 120, $130 in that zone somewhere, you know, so it's not like there were these massive donations or people are donating, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. These are small transactions, but people got involved because they knew what was right. And people, I think, at, you know, people's core values, they want to help each other. They want to see justice. They want, they don't want people to starve and, you know, get sick. And, and it's been such a trying time during the pandemic and to be able to see, you know, how, how that platform in particular has been able to shift and grow with the times and have this flexibility, um, you know, during Black Lives Matter, uh, you know, protests and whatnot, uh, they paid for, you know, patrons, patrons did, because all of the money goes directly from the patron to the um, person in need, which is the best part, because, you know, they don't take a dime. It's all, how, all how, do they, how do they vet the recipients? Um, you know, they'll speak to them and they'll do the best they can to, to vet, but ultimately the, they match them and there's, you know, whether it's bail bonds for the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, for people who were wrongfully uh, arrested and, or whether it's people who are sick, people who needed help with their groceries, with their um, electricity, just whatever it is. And it's, it's just so important. And now um, it's gotten the attention, not only nationally, but internationally that it really deserves. So I'm really uh, so, feel so grateful and lucky that I was able to um, meet Shelly at such an early stage, you know, day five of the process and, and uh, I'm passionate about it. Oh, it's crazy. Well, I, I got to tell you a funny story. Something that happened to me today that wow. I, I, I did, a, I did my pre-show today uh, mm -hmm. where I, where I was doing my electoral coverage and I was smoking, having a little puff because it was 420 live on the East coast. And uh, I guess I got a little bit too buzzed. And I'd said, my guest today is Wendy Starland. And a friend of mine's like, I grew up with Wendy. And I said, Wendy who? And they were like, and everybody started laughing. I had one of my friends say it was one of the funniest things ever. It's like, you forgot who you were talking about in like two seconds. But I wanted to inter I wanted to reintroduce you to somebody that you grew up with right here on the air. Is that okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. I, I, I think it's going to be all right. Oh my God, Annabelle. Hi. Hi, Wind. <laughs> oh my God. This is so crazy. How I, was like, I couldn't believe he said that. And then he was like, 
And then he was like, Wendy who? And I'm like, did I hear that wrong? I was like, I don't know. But that's why I don't smoke weed. So <laughs> hi. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. I'm totally fine. I mean, you know, I listened to what you guys were talking about and I have identification and I'm just hanging in there in the business until things pick back up. I hear you. I hear you. So, so tell me, uh, cause this is such an unusual combination here. Annabelle mm -hmm. and Wendy, how do you know each other? New York city social scene, baby. We both right. went to private schools and we shared one of our best friends ever that died of brain cancer, which is really awful. And um, who actually Seymour Stein, do you know who Seymour Stein is, Jeff? Oh, sure. Yes. It's his daughter, Samantha oh. Stein. She was kind of a core in our scene. And Wendy and I spent many, many days and nights together in the New York City social scene for sure. <laughs> trying to figure it out. That was hard. Right now. I can't even believe it. I, I knew I knew it'd be so to out of left field because you, you, you probably had no idea that we knew each other. But I'm in the jam band scene. I mean, a lot of my photography works. I work with Bonnaroo and I work with Outside Lands and the, a lot of these festivals Annabelle also works on. But we've been friends even before that, probably two or three decades going back. So yeah, that means you probably know Pete Shapiro. Oh, yes. Yes. So yes, and he in the next box on the bottom. Yes, yes. <laughs> the fourth. He would come on in a second if I sent him that link. Jeff, I swear, right now. Do it. Do it. I, I, I can do it. He's so funny. I love Future Piero. He is a, a legend. He's a total. Oh, was he in part of this um, this social scene that you guys were in in New York? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. And he was just. You know, a dorky Jew from the Upper East Side. You know, I mean, like <laughs> the best city social scene is like really insane. And we all grew up together, and we all went to different schools, and we were all best friends. And we snuck out at night and drank our parents' liquor and smoked their weed <laughs> and like all these things, like buying wine coolers at the bodegas when we were like four <laughs> or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it what was, was the last time you the last time you two uh, connected. Was it Samantha's funeral? It probably was, which sucked. So, but we all showed up. You know, we all came back together. Yeah, and, for sure. And we and all, like, you know, whenever we see each other, it's like no time has passed. Oh <laughs> yeah, you're my sister forever, Wendy. Forever, <laughs> forever. Yeah, Wendy girl. <laughs> And I'm, I remember you years ago passing along your music when it was first coming out to us and us all listening. And it was just great. You know, we have to support each other for our whole lives because we changed so much over the years. I love it. I love it. Things change, but some things stay the same. Exactly. And like, the bond will always stay the same. I just think it's amazing. <laughs> Jeff, look at you. Okay, I want you to. This is the reunited. Now I want you to do a reunited um, TikTok dance for me because <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> now wait, how did you know? How did you guys know each other? Well, I uh, I saw Wendy on socials, and we had some uh, some mutual friends. And so I like, followed yeah. her. She's a beautiful lady, and then she's a, right? a major talent. Thanks. Yes, incredible voice and absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Thank you guys. Your Thank hair you. looks really good, blonde. <laughs> Thank you. I've been working on it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I feel the love. I appreciate it. it, it it's all part of it. Well, Annabelle, thank you for chiming in. <laughs> now you guys can reconnect again. Yes, Wendy. Under oh. happier circumstances. No, it's this is the kind of thing that brings out the joy, you know, like nothing else matters right in these two minutes because I'm looking at my childhood friend and we are reminding each other how much we love each other. So that's really all that matters, right? I love you, Annabelle. I love you too, Wendy. Thanks, so Annabelle. Happy. You know, we'll uh, be talking to each other in a couple hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait for those last six. <laughs> Go blue. Bye. Thanks, Annabelle. So that wasn't too bad, right? That was amazing. Oh my God. What a surprise. That was just so crazy. I love it. Well, yeah, I, I was I was like, well, I don't I don't think she'll mind if no, I if I surprise her. Of course not. I mean that was such a gift. I just love her. She's 
totally incredible. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, like knowing both of you, I was like, how are you guys connected? Because she's in the jam band world, living in Boulder now, in this whole different environment. Yeah, you know? New York City is like, I love New York City for this reason, because, you know, it's like the cream really rises to the top and, and the good people find each other and... And you have all these experiences that you just look back on. And I see Annabelle and I think of like a million memories from when we were, you know, when I was a little girl. <laughs> yeah. awesome. it, it, when did you come to California? In 2008. So, so that was, you know, and I love it. And I have planted roots here and I think I'll probably stay forever. <laughs> I mean, maybe I, I may, try to have a New York home at some point as well. But um, I really love LA. The pace is great for me and the sunshine's great and the music. I mean, what I love about it is there's such a concentration of talent here in a way where in New York people, it's not really that affordable anymore. It's very, very hard to you know, well, it, it, the, the prices, I think, are going to come down on the real estate in New York and in L.A. It, it's a different story because I I, I think that the, the music industry part that you're in where you're recording and you're in the studio and stuff like that in L.A. is great. But for me, the live music vibe in L.A., it's like one of the least my worst, my least favorite music, live music cities, just because everybody that comes here, it, it's they're in the industry. So they're performing for all the industry people. But when you go to a, a, a smaller town in America or somewhere else, or even New York City, and see a show at the Garden. You really feel the energy. Where California, it's just so hard to get everybody cranked up. I think it might be a different energy though when we come back. I think everybody's going to be very. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be an insane energy when we come back. It's just going to be like people are going to be raging. <laughs> <laughs> they are going to be raging. They have bad cabin fever. They want to feel close. I mean. Some of the nice things though from the pandemic have been, you really, the conversations have become deeper and you get more intimately connected with people because it's not like, oh, what'd you do today? It's more like, how do you feel about this? What's important to you? You know, people's intentions come to the surface more quickly, their ethics, their, all of it. So it's really cool to uh, to have. I love those kinds of conversations. So it, it feels good to, ha to have that kind of. I've become much closer with a bunch of my friends. And well, well, we're circling our troops and creating our community. Do you find that? For sure. For sure. And you see who is, you know, full of shit and who's not. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> it's like, OK, well, as we're, you know, there's also like our senses are a little bit heightened, wouldn't you say? Because mm -hmm. we're like in a box and we're, you know, our emotions are a little bit closer to the surface of our skin. So how we react in times of stress, in times of, you know, political turmoil or, you know, whatever it is. Um, like I said, I've, I had all these deaths during this time and um, how the people around you relate to you during that is is very telling of kind of what your relationships like with them and it's nice to know that you have people there who are like really there for you and really want to see you grow and um you know care about you care about your best interests and and succeed what what are you like what have you been working on during the pandemic i mean you have a lot of do you find that you have time i mean i find i have a lot of time to myself i've been busy with the show but do you have you organized everything and got every all your ducks in a row and are you I, being creative? my tail off actually um so th it's at this stage of my life i'm really an entrepreneur that's you know i've kind of taken all of the experience i've had from not only the lady gaga experience but you know all these other artists not only just creatively with you know songwriting and um, producing and whatever but the business lessons. I mean, I learned so many lessons from the experiences I've had as an artist myself, as whatnot. And so now um, I've been able to apply that in other industries. So one of the industries in which I've done that is the beauty industry. 
And um, a friend of mine who's also an incredible songwriter producer named Lars Jensen, um, who's sold 60 million records. I mean, he's just an unbelievable talent and worked with, you know, New Kids on the Block and, you know, P. Diddy and everybody. Uh, he, he's just like such a great guy and became one of my best friends um, through songwriting. We decided to create a beauty company where we create custom makeup, skincare, and fragrance lines for celebrities and social media influencers. And um, we're so lucky to have signed Iggy Azalea and some other great talent um, and creating, you know, helping to so them. You, you basically white. You like. white label it and you, you you have certain products you create for each um, celebrity based on what they want. And then you, you kind of white label to put their label on it, right? No, no. Oh. It's literally their creation. So, you know, they will say exactly what they want and, and exactly how they want it. And, um, and we just bring that vision to, to life, whatever it is that they want. And it's pretty, it's, <laughs> you know, it's exciting, but it's, it's similar to being a record producer in that way, because you want to bring the artist's vision to life too, as a songwriter, as a record producer. So this has been an amazing uh, journey and we're lucky enough to work with one of the best chemists in the world who does it for Max, Sephora, Maybelline, you know, Estee Lauder, you name it. And um, and so we have world-class products that we're creating and with world-class artists and, and celebrities. So I'm, I'm so you're actually creating a whole brand and a whole brand new product and everything based on what each one is a different project. Exactly. Exactly. So that's really been cool. I've also been working on this VR um, that I was telling you about mm -hmm. uh, with Georgia Sinclair, who is an incredible, she, she's uh, St. Clair, um, the DJ, who is a world-class, world-renowned DJ. So that's really exciting. And read along with her and Red Pill VR. And um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's been a busy time during during the pandemic, but I'm I'm loving the direction that things are headed, and I'm very hopeful for the future. I think that things are. We had to sift through this mess and untangle the crap that we've inherited. To be honest, I mean, we've inherited so much you know, racism and inequality in <laughs> so many ways. So now we're able to really push forward and and hopefully <laughs> hopefully the right people will be in power and, um, and bring a little bit of uh, justice back to well, all of the broken systems that we've inherited. <laughs> you gotta pray that it, that it happens. I mean, are you, uh, do, do you, are, are you a, do you, uh, are you a big believer in Mercury retrograde and the planetary alignment and all that kind of stuff? I'm not going to say that I, I, you know, listen, I don't, um, I, I don't, I don't live and die by anything. No, but no, but there's something to it and we are on a planet. And so, and there we are in a solar system and we're part of something greater and we can ignore it as much as we want to. But at the end of the day, um, we are small specks in the universe, in this very large universe, and it has a force. There's yeah, and there, there's a lot of different energies going around, and I really, I feel it. I can feel the swirl of what's been going on because it's so. I'm just kind of like trying to stay out of it and not get hurt myself, you know, yeah. and just remain sane because I think that's part of it. you start to lose your sanity because. Uh, let's face it, I kind you kind of lose your identity when you're identified with a career like I've been for three decades you know, uh, having a camera with me and going everywhere, taking photographs, it's kind of different than uh, all of a sudden you just stop and I'm doing this now and I'm doing other things, but I'm creative like you are and you find different outlets, which I think is what I'm getting from, from you, that you find different ways for your creativity and the things that you learned to apply them to new businesses and things and, and develop and keep growing. We, even though something may seem like it's finished, it's really just a, a doorway to another uh, adventure. 
it's like, I don't want to live the same day, you know, for the rest of my life. I, I love that kind of variety and spontaneity and, and building things. Like there's nothing more exciting to me than just building, like having an idea in my head and then turning it into a reality. And I'm so grateful that I've been able to do that really, really successfully. Um, and I want to keep doing it successfully in so many other areas. And why, why not challenge myself in brand new ways all the time? That's just sort of what life is about for me to keep it, you know, without passion for what you're doing, then you just kind of get, it's like, oh, same old, same old. I'm, I'm very passionate person. And I love, I love to learn. I just find that to be the most exciting thing. So I'm learning something new every day, all the time. Yeah, I've, I've found this an amazing time right now to gather our energy and to learn new things and to go on new adventures. And I really feel that I feel it coming. I feel I feel the change happening. I, I felt it coming yesterday. I felt the frustration and I felt the release. So I, I'm with you. I, I, I'm excited for what's happening and I'm excited for a new adventure. I mean, taking pictures was fun for 30 years. But I could still do that a little bit and do a lot of other things. And, that, and that's kind of what I want to do is kind of diversify, get into For some other sure. stuff. You know, challenge yourself something. You'll always be a photographer. I will always be a singer. You know, I don't know if I'm going to be, you know, I used to be go on tour for years and, um, you know, hopping from one city to the next. And, and well, that, that whole lifestyle is finished right now. Right. I mean, for everybody. Yeah. It is for everyone on every level. And so that that's, I mean, like I was saying, that's why I think the VR thing is so cool because it doesn't have to stop there. It could, you know, reinvent itself in a brand new way, which is beautiful. But my, to my point, it's like, you will always be a photographer. I will always be a singer and a songwriter and producer. And that is, always going to be part of me no matter what I'm exploring and no matter what you're exploring. I mean, I think it's so cool that you started 420 Live and and made this into your brand. This is yeah. It's been a lot of fun. It's been an educational experience. Like you said, I had to teach myself a lot of different things to be able to pull it off. But it's I love being able to stay in touch with people. And I had so much fun doing my election specials the past couple of days because you can have fun. I can relax. It's not like I have to take myself seriously, which is great. So thank you. I appreciate you noticing. Yeah. Well, you know, you're such an authentic person. And I think that that really comes through because there's nothing better than, you know, having someone who's, you know, you don't want a stiff person interviewing you. You want somebody who's like, you know, a real authentic person. And you really are. I mean, that's, that's the appeal of someone like Joe Rogan, for example, who's just such, you know, a true guy. Like I just right. love the man, the man's man. <laughs> Isn't it? Well, he's just, he's a real guy. He's just, you know, he's, he's everything. He's, he's, he's a real guy with a hundred million dollar deal with Spotify. I'll do it for a million. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he earned it. He earned it. He, every step of the way. I mean, but you know, I'm giving you credit. I think you've got that same authenticity. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. I did hear from Pete Shapiro. He he's at, yes, he's at dinner with Jimmy Fallon. So he's like, sorry. Tell Wendy I said hi, though. <laughs> Love you. He's, he's Shapi is one of a kind. We've had a lot of fun over the years with each other. He's he's, he's the character, as you know. He's a first he unbelievable. The greatest. He's the greatest. And such, you know, talk about like he I really think that he is a legend in his own time. I mean talk about making moves and reinventing himself. And, and I mean, his story is fascinating. Have you had him on the show? Oh yes. A couple of times. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. He, he's great. I mean, I've been going to the Brooklyn bowl and they're supposed to open a Brooklyn bowl here in Los Angeles and Santa Monica is the word that I was heard, but I don't know what's happening right now, but we don't really have a West side music venue mm. in that uh, in Los Angeles. So this would be a great addition, especially once we start getting back to, you know, Back to, Back to normal. <laughs> it, it is going to happen, Wendy. I got my fingers crossed. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have faith. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, Wendy Starlin, thank you so much for coming on. I did grab your uh, Instagram handle for anybody that wants to follow Wendy and check mm -hmm. her out. She's on IG. She's yes. a great job. You are follow living the life. 
I watch you living the life, enjoying yourself, doing photo shoots. You're you're on top of the world. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much. And I loved being on here. So thank you for everything and congratulations. Thanks. And I look forward <laughs> to seeing you soon. And I'll be in touch. I want to talk to you about some of this VR stuff and, and uh, we, we'll, we'll trade ideas. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Thanks, Wendy. Have a great day. You too. Bye. All right, bye. The beautiful Wendy Starlin. It's so nice to have a beautiful lady to talk to. I mean, I love all my musician dude friends, but let's face it. It just makes it so much more pleasurable uh, and easy on the eyes, right? I mean, uh, don't look at my half of the screen. Just look at Wendy's half when you're watching the show. Um, I have a couple sponsors to tell you all about. First, Grady's Cold Brew. Get your cold brew kit from Grady's. I was on their site today, and not only can you get a cold brew kit, but you can become a part owner of Grady's too. Very interesting company. So uh, get on there. Get your cold brew kit. This will keep you up. I'm going to start brewing it. I got to get this into my fridge and, and figure out how it works. I don't think it's that hard, actually. Both of my girls, we already have it. They're drinking in the house. Get on Grady's. And I actually have a link for you guys. Right here is my Grady's cold brew link. So check out the Grady's. It comes in this cool little pouch with a little nozzle thing on it. So you put this in your, uh, your uh, fridge and then you drink it. And look at all that cold brew. They also have a big old box, too, that you can check out. And uh, from cold brew to synthetic rugs, here it is. Sinlon, the original, environmentally friendly. Look, I get it. You're like, what am I going to do with the lawn? Go to Sinlon. They have a contest, and you can get a five-foot by seven-foot roll of this for free just by going to their website. Go to the website, sign up, get your roll of Sinlon, and put it in a room in your house and set up a couple heat lamps, put a park bench up there, maybe a little thing for the dog to run around. Make a dog run in your house with a five foot by seven foot, or, or you know, just make your room like an outdoor patio. Check out Sin Lawn for all your synthetic lawn needs. I have a synthetic lawn at home. I'm a big on the synthetic lawns because uh, we don't want to waste water in Santa Monica. Solo Pipe Venice, the one-handed pipe, some of our guests will receive the Solo Pipe and Solo Pipe Venice, and others will receive the, the Asher's 420 Live Bar. Yes, I haven't talked about the 420 Live Bar in a while, but it's still in existence. You can get it at Asher's.com, at Asher's Chocolate, 20% off your order. If you spend $75, you'll get the 20% off, and Jeffrey Asher will throw a Fort or Chet, will throw a uh, 420 Live Bar into the order because they'll know that you use the 420 Live, that you're one of our viewers. The 420 Live Bar is a CBD chocolate bar with potato chips, pretzels, mini M&Ms, raisins, coconut flakes, and uh, did I say CBD? Raisins, coconut flakes, potato chips, pretzels, raisins, coconut flakes, mini M&Ms. Yes. It's fucking delicious. I actually miss it. I, I finished my last one and you know, I've been on a diet. I've lost like 10 pounds, but my, you know, you have to take care of yourselves. And over the pandemic, I was just eating everything. I didn't care. I didn't care how my body felt. And then I was like, ah, you know what? Eating meat's probably not a, not making you feel too good. I had to kick the meat, had to kick the habit. You know what? I want to see. Do, do we have a president yet? Anyone? What do we got? We're still we're still one Nevada away from a president. One Nevada away. Come on, come on, Nevada, Canada, and I could see PA, Pennsylvania. What the hell? We could start. You're going to count your ballots until Tuesday? Oi. Oi, oi, oi. Mm. Wait. Wait. Stop right there. Before we go any further, do you love me? Will you love me forever? Do you need me? Will you never leave me? Will you make me so happy for the rest of my life? Will you take me away? Will you make me a wife? I want to know right now. Before any go any further. Before we go any further, do you love me? Will you love me forever? Well, what's it going to be, baby? Yes? Yes or no? I'm not going to finish it. I'm not going to finish it. Paradise by the Dashboard Light, one of my favorite songs. It is getting close, Facebook user. It's so frustrating that one of my Facebook shares, I think it's on my 420 Live or my, either my Jeff Krause 420 Live or on my Funsters. 
I just get the random Facebook users unless they answer 50 questions to StreamYard about who they are. So yes, it is getting close. It's still 264 to 214. I don't, you know, Rumpy doesn't have a shot. That's sorry. I hate to feel like um, I'm cursing it, but you know, I already felt like he was going to win last night and I was like, Ugh, I have to move. <laughs> I have to sell my house. I have to call Mark Bloom or Robin Walpert and it's sell my house. No, not selling the house, not moving. I'm staying here in America. I'm staying here to be the scourge. I'm staying here to make sure that things are done the right way. I'm going to be right here and I'm fucking watching. And you guys out there, any he, Biden, you do one step, you do anything like Trump, and I'm pulling your car, dude. I'm being weird. <laughs> Don't jinx it. Come on, I'm looking right now. There's no way. All right, I'll stop talking about it. I'll breathe. I'm being weird. You ain't seen nothing yet, Janine. <laughs> All right, everybody out there, thank you for tuning in. Peace, love, and happiness. Here's a big hug. Two shows today. I mean, I am full of hot air. I did the election special, and then I did the interview with Wendy. Tomorrow we have our friend Larry Flowers on the show talking about jewelry. I mean, there's not a subject here I won't talk about. I don't care if I know zip about the subject. I'll still talk to the people. Try to make myself come off like an expert. I'm being weird. It's extra for weird. You know that, right? Me being normal is free, but weird, that's the subscription service. Subscribe to the 420 Live Weird page. Watch me get weird. You know what they say? The weird get going the weird get going glow blue go blue go go blue blue go go blue did you like that that was fun wasn't it janine that was a good day today it was nice to have be surrounded by ladies i am all, all the time i wake up in the morning there's my wife julianne my dog nola also a good lady a girl a woman, a woman dog, <laughs> my daughter, Kiki and Olivia. And, uh, you know, what can I say? It's time for dinner. I'm going to go. I've had enough. I had enough talking today. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. We will see you tomorrow right here. 420 live.